call this meeting of the uh, Committee of the Whole of the Rocky Mountain City Council to order. Welcome everybody here today. We've got uh, two council members that I know will not be here, and I think Mr. Knight, I don't know if he's coming or not. Walking through the door. He will be. Walking through the door. Walking in the door. There he is. <laughs> not coming. You're not coming. Okay. You and I are something about it. Um, welcome uh, guests, staff who are here. Uh, recognize uh, council member elect Walker, who's with us today. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. You'll be sitting at this table sooner than later. <laughs> Some of us will be sitting at home. Smiling. <laughs> um, let, me, uh, let me acknowledge the uh, city manager to uh, start the meeting. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, um, Mayor Pro Tem and members of council. Uh, we have somewhat of a lengthy uh, agenda, but we'll begin uh, first with the um, 2020 conservative cost. Uh, public services analysis that's run annually by uh, Ken Hunter. Uh, Ken? Good afternoon to everybody. I want to thank, thank you all. This is something that we have done uh, every year uh, for a very long time. We have uh, attempted to try to share this information with council, and we also share this information each year in the My Rocky Mountain uh, magazine that occurs. And it's an analysis that we do to try to compare the cost of our combined public services to other municipalities in North Carolina. We do this on a fiscal year basis to take into account not only tax rates, but also utilities. And the reason why we do this, um, uh, the reason why we do this and why it's important is because we recognize that we are a full service city. And that in that we not only are providing general government services, but are also providing basic utility services, full utility services, electric, natural gas, water, sewer, and stormwater, as well as solid waste services and recycling. And it's important for us as we look at what the cost is to the citizen and to the resident of Rocky Mount is to kind of get an apples to apples comparison of what those costs would combine be with respect to other taxes and utilities that would be experienced in other cities. So we do a survey of, uh, of uh, 19 municipalities in total, and the uh, reason why it's 19 and the reason why we have 20 numbers in total is because we do look at the variances that do exist in, in Rocky Mountain with respect to tax values and rates in Edgecombe County as well as tax values and rates in Nash County. So we do look at those independently. We take into account median resident residential values and the effective property tax, both city and county for each of the municipalities. We looked at taxes and fees on $25,000 in vehicles. Uh, that would be a typical household. We look at electric service, which an average household uses about 1,000 kilowatt hours a month of electricity. We also look at water and sewer services. The average there typically is about 3,000 gallons a month or four units of uh, 400, four units of water as we would consider based on how we measure it with our meters, as well as looking at stormwater management and solid waste fees. And again, this utilizes our adopted tax rates and utility rates, not only for us, but for the other member jurisdictions for fiscal year 2020. The good news to report is that overall, as you can see in this group, which includes jurisdictions across the state, and many of which are of similar size to us, some smaller, some larger, but generally speaking, many of them in the same size, we are doing pretty well with respect to our overall cost. Our overall cost is ranked about 18th and 19th out of the group. The only city that we're above is Washington to our east at about $3,850, $3,845, $3,850 on average if you took the two counties together, which is about $320 a month. So. The, the total cost for government services, which includes utilities, and we also take into account in these other cities, including the fact that many of these cities are investor-owned utilities, get their service from Duke Energy or from other investor-owned services. But we take this into account to show that overall the, the value by which we try to do our best to minimize the cost to our resident in terms of the provision and delivery of these services, which are very similar to what these other full service cities do with some variations in how they provide utility service, is comparable and that we're doing a very good job of being as affordable as possible in terms of the cost of those services. And this is another example uh, of the chart that again you can see here we're towards the right, towards the lower end. The overall average for the group is about $4,500. So on average, cities are, residents are paying around $4,500 a year in these 20 cities for new services. And as you can see, our services are around $600, $650 less than what you would find in those other jurisdictions. You can see there are some cities here, Wilmington, Apex, and Cary, which are significantly above the average. 
and, uh, and as such uh, do have a higher cost for their public services. Overall, our costs remain low. These are some comparables that we do to show where we are in regard to other jurisdictions of note. As you can see, we're about $390 less than Wilson, $490 less than Harborough, $500 less than Greenville, $520 less than our neighbors to the west in Nashville, $810 less than High Point. And looking to the largest one in Wilmington, we're almost $2,500 less than what the cost of these services would be in Wilmington. So how do we get there? How is it that we're able to maintain this cost? Well, not only is it a combination of doing our best to maintain costs low, but there are some advantages that we have. We continue to have overall an affordable real estate market here in Rocky Mount, and we definitely see that in terms of the amount of interest that is coming from home buyers, even from those who primarily work and have interest in the Raleigh area or in Greenville or in other markets that have looked to Rocky Mount as a place to reside. Uh, and in some cases move their businesses. We also, of course, have taken actions over the last several years uh, to address the issues that we did have with electric rates. We were doing okay when our electric rates were at pre the uh, merger and pre the buyout with Duke Energy, but we have obviously done a good job to reduce those rates and as such be able to facilitate reducing the cost that, that electricity has with respect to the overall, overall cost of public service. Uh, we also, as part of our electric system, offer significant load management credits, which we encourage our customers to take advantage of. And those are credits that they can benefit from throughout the course of the year, both with electric and heating, with, with, with heating and, and, the, and the air conditioning services. We also, overall, the jurisdiction have low water and sewer rates. Uh, several jurisdictions, like Wilmington, uh, have, have significantly higher water and sewer rates than we do. So overall, we're below average in regards to our water and sewer rates. We also do something that some other jurisdictions don't, in that we do actually assess real solid waste and stormwater fees. In other jurisdictions, they roll that into their tax rate. And it doesn't really provide an accurate depiction of the impact of it. What it also means is that you're not necessarily overcharging residential, residential uh, citizens for the costs associated with industrial and commercial stormwater management. Because it's assessed by an ERU, everybody's paying aptly, aptly what they're actually using in terms of the services based on the amount of uh, undrainable surface area that they have on the property. Looking with respect to property tax, our at the average for the group is around 2270. And as you can see here, we're at the bottom in terms of the actual cost based on median property value. Uh, so as you can see, we're all around $1,800, which is pretty, which is which is pretty significant. And again, that goes back to the ability, affordability of our local housing market. In terms of all inclusive utility costs, all all inclusive. The average is around 22.62. As you can see, Wilmington's on the high end of 34.51. And again, Rocky Mount is below this at just around $2,000, $2,040 a year on average for our residential customers. Uh, obviously, rates are going to differ, and there's going to be differences based on consumptions that are applied at higher levels, which is why we don't necessarily look at them in terms of this. But when we look at it from a residential perspective, we can see that overall we are performing well with respect. Uh, to our utility calls for our residents, and this includes all utility services. This is an overall ranking again, just to show you to conclude here, and as again, as you can see, overall we perform well not only with respect to our taxes, both when we combine both city and county taxes, which all municipal residents do regardless of where they live here in North Carolina, as well as we do very well with respect to our electric rates, as well as with our water, sewer, storm, uh, stormwater, and solid waste rates. So all around, we are able to provide an affordable product to our residents with respect to the cost of providing the full services that we provide to our residents here in Rocky Mountain. And I'll be happy to take any questions. So the electric rates, are they also based on a, some kind of median or are they based on a kilowatt usage? They're based on a kilowatt usage of 1,000 kilowatt hours per month, which is which which is normal for a residential customer. Obviously, there's going to be customers who are going to use more customers who are going to use less, but sure. typically that's close to the median. So is Wilson one of those cities that uh, where the stormwater and so solid waste is covered through property taxes instead of fees? Their stormwater is covered through a rate. Their solid waste, I believe, is covered through property. Where, where is gas on this? Am I missing it? Gas, gas? No, no, so gas, gas, the cost of We gas. don't include gas because gas is not necessarily used by every customer. Okay. And because it varies depending <coughs> on whether you use it for heat or use it for heat and hot water. Use it for heat and hot water. So we have not in the past uh, included gas. We can certainly look at that in the future. Okay. 
and also not all of these jurisdictions provide gas services or necessarily have the same connectability with, part within, with the investor owned utilities. So the amount used in Edgecombe and Wackenhout as well as Nashville is the same? Yes, it is. In terms of utility usage, yes. So their utility costs are the same. And again, we apply that average to everybody. So we assume that we, we, we make it on the idea that generally speaking, if you were owning a, if you were a residence, typically on average it would be about a thousand kilowatt hours of electricity usage over the course of twelve on a twelve month rolling average and looking at about three thousand gallons of water usage. And of course in all these jurisdictions, the sewer is applied with respect to the amount of water usage. And the reason I ask that is because you know, of course in the inner cities of mm -hmm. both of these counties, you know, you have have to look at a little deeper. The last time we did run the numbers overall with respect to the twin counties and we were trying to look at it holistically, we looked at it and it was close to a thousand kilowatt hours and that of course was for all residents inside the city. We have not necessarily looked at it with respect to how much electricity is used for residents of Edgecombe County as opposed to residents of Nash County. We have not looked at that. But you just use an average up there, right? Correct. So what, what this report does is compares us to other cities and municipalities around us. Correct. But if we wanted to go deeper, mm -hmm. are we able to segregate by address or community or so we could would we be able to compare apples with apples so we could see if you're living in one neighborhood how average rates might compare to living in another neighborhood. There are ways that we can do that and we have before looked at usages and other matters with respect to award bases. We have to be careful because obviously we don't we don't want to get we don't want to drill down too low that we cause potential issues because of privacy. So we have to be we have to be wary of that. But we, there are ways that we can take the data and try to do more localized analysis if we choose to kind of look at a comparison within our jurisdiction. And again, that's the challenge with any type of analysis is that obviously the nature of, of specific areas is going to be different. And so we have to we have to do our best to provide as best as we can. Of a comparison, it is certainly a good comparison to look at, and even if, and even with potentially higher energy usage due to due to some of the factors that you brought up and that Ms. Wilkins brought up, uh, it's certainly a matter that we need that we can definitely work with. Itself. Watkins, I'm sorry. My apologies. I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, two, two questions, Ken. One on Kenston. Why are they such an outlier in terms of on the low end of for electric? Excuse me. They are another municipal owned utility. Right. Uh, they are an electric city member, and I believe it's how they have their rate structure. But they do have a lower, we can look at that, I can get you information on their rate specifically. But they do, they did have a lower rate structure. They did lower their rate structure at, at, to a certain degree. So they are an outlier. They're probably the most significant one. The others are pretty, the others are pretty close. What's interesting also is you have Fayetteville, which is another, they are an MOU, but they're not part of electric cities. They're in 1800. Uh, and then you have some of these others which are electric city members that are actually have higher rates and then also the variance that's existed in the past between us and Duke has gone down significantly and with the next rate increase proposal that Duke is looking at actually it looks like Duke's rates will be higher than ours. Is there any way to look at trending analysis? Are we able to see like over the last however long you've been doing the report, you know, have we picked up or lost or some categories higher, lower, remaining constant? We can certainly provide that information. What I can tell you off the top of my head, and I'll, I'll have to be general here, is that uh, prior to the rate reduction that we achieved in electricity a couple of years back, we were kind of, we were below the we were below the median, but we were probably more in about the 12, 13, 14 position. With the rate reduction, we have dropped significantly. And in terms of the impact on property taxes, we've been pretty consistent. All these jurisdictions have adjusted their rates for various reasons, and of course, obviously, their, their, their values with respect to homes have changed with respect to their market position. And so, in general, that area has remained the same. And with respect to water and sewer, we've remained below average. 
Why do you think you remain low? Well, water? I think some of it has to do, first of all, that we that we have a very good supply system with the reservoir, and we've been able to maintain, and with the fact that we have that supply, uh, we've been able to maintain our position with respect to our rates. We've not had any significant rate increases in the last couple of years. Several jurisdictions have undergone rate increases in the last couple of years. So some of these jurisdictions have seen, that's probably been the area where they've seen the most growth has been in their water and sewer bills. Wilmington's going to be an outlier because of its coastal proximity. So there are certain other factors that they have to account for in their system. But other jurisdictions, I can, if you look at it from year to year, you would see that they've also had to implement rate increases. But if you look at National, and I, National and Tarboro are compared to Rocky Mountain, in many ways it's not, a, they're not comparable, it seems like. But why would there be about a 50%, 40, 50% more higher cost there? On National, I believe a lot of it has to do with sewer. They do not run a sewer system, they're a wholesale customer of ours, and so they're not really in a position to achieve any economy of scale with respect to their sewer distribution. So they have to factor that into their rates. Other questions? All right. Ken, thank you very much. Okay. Michelle? All right. Next item is a uh, text amendment to reduce the number of historic preservation and commission members. The recommendation. Stand over here. Um, good afternoon. We had, we had kind of briefly touched on this uh, a few months back and we were working with boards and commissions to uh, try and fill some of these vacancies. And um, we've got nine currently on HPC. We've had two vacancies for a while. We've talked with the state Chapeau office and looked at some of the other um, neighboring communities and, and how many they have. And uh, they recommend that based on our size, um, our staff recommendation would be seven. And that would reduce the uh, uh, required number um, to have a quorum and hold a meeting, and then of course when we do that, we want to pursue uh, certified local government status uh, that will open us up to more training and funding opportunities for the commission and other historic projects. We have uh, spoken with the HPC about this. We have uh, spoken to the planning board, but we anticipate going to the planning board tomorrow night. It was rescheduled from last Tuesday due to the local election. So we'll receive their recommendation tomorrow night, and we hope to proceed and bring it back to you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have questions. Um, so you're recommending this gets reduced from nine to seven. So you, so do you have a methodology? Forgive me, I'm not very in detail. Uh -huh. For how the seven members would be comprised. For some of the other, for most of the committees that the council appoints to, we each have a ward appointment. And um, so, are you providing? guidance on methodology? Are you asking us to go back and reevaluate um, how we appoint our numbers? We're, we're hoping to just bring it bring it down to seven. Um, in our, in the code, it, specifically for historic preservation, you're trying to get sort of like-minded um, individuals. So if you have a recommendation, it wouldn't be by ward, but it would be um, those that have a background in history, architecture, develop a real estate agent. Yeah, I understand that. that. When we started um, our process, there are a few committees that do not adhere to water appointments. But I'll just say 20 years ago, when I first started, there were a handful of people who were calling the shots on every board. Okay. And then this council um, determined that everybody, every ward needed a vote. And I think the only commissions that I can think of are CCRP and maybe historic preservation. Is that about right? Planning board, every ward has a voice. Board of adjustments, every ward has a voice. <coughs> Animal control, and I'm trying to think of anything else. Maybe the one that does not the, uh, the housing authority's mayor appointed. The mayor has solved the one that Pam, you cleared up I mean, you give me the book. <laughs> <laughs> but you can speak on well, that. I thought too. the last meeting we had a discussion yeah. and we were sort of skeptical about reducing it from, from nine to seven. We want to have a little bit more discussion among ourselves as council. Yeah. 
hoping that we can find uh, citizens to fill those two positions. Um, since that was the challenge that uh, those two positions was not filled. Okay. Mm -hmm. We only had an opportunity to discuss that. <clears throat> so, yeah. Do you have do you have actions that are on the table that you need action on? <clears throat> that you can't get action for approval for right now? Are there, are there agenda items that need to be addressed today? From from historic preservation? Not reasonably, no. We do have, so we do have seven that regularly attend because we do have the two vacancies and uh, we weren't trying to put anybody out, but um, we sometimes have a problem getting a quorum of that group uh, with, with these areas. We've had some people that have been on there a long time. Um, but we can pretty much get most of the, the items done uh, that we need to. Mayor? Um, so we, we've had nine. Your recommendation is to bring it five? Seven. seven. Okay. Now, will that uh, be an issue with uh, getting the uh, State Historic Preservation Office to get that designation with seven members? No, they actually recommended five, yes. but that's like the bare minimum, and okay. I'm just not a fan of getting down to the bare minimum when we have current members that are serving. I'd hate to right, right. chop it even further. Okay. But that reduces the quorum number to four, so we can do <coughs> regular business and conduct business in those cases where we have people that can't attend. If you have seven, you can have four. Four and a quarter, yeah. Okay. So you're you're basically you were just giving us an update for your the benefit of your thinking mm -hmm. with the planning board taking a look at it their meeting tomorrow with it coming back to us I guess next month yeah if that's, if that's your desire we haven't given uh, given it to them as a formal you know to get their formal recommendation yet we've just been keeping HBC updated and the planning board updated anticipating any discussion here <coughs> I guess the reason for my question is, does that give us time to have more discussion about it? And have it come back to us next month? Point of clarification. So it seems like those who are appointed or serving there are not ward appointments, correct? Correct. So maybe if we go to ward appointments and we know the person that's coming from the ward that that are interested in has, uh, the background in history and architect that it would be such a challenge. I think where the challenge probably had come um, existed that it was not war appointments and we were just appointed people <coughs> that, that had an interest. But I'm quite sure I can find, uh, well, I have one on, on there already from war appointments. So what I would just recommend, just ask the council. And this um, handout that I gave you uh, will show you who is currently serving. Here. Right. That. So that might fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, I just really hesitate to change or reduce or increase, especially reduce um, citizen input because somebody doesn't come to a meeting. I think that. We're responsible for accountability from our constituents, and that if, and I think there are plenty of people in Rocky Mountain. I can't imagine, you know, who would want to volunteer, especially knowing that historic preservation is at the top of our agenda for reviving downtown development. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would just go back and revisit who was appointed, and and I would agree in the future that we should look at board appointments for all committees and mayoral appointments. Uh, we've done that for most committees. Mm -hmm. question as it relates to that, um, and, and I think we've had a discussion over the years that the I mean, yeah, WB wants to make an appointment and, and, and does it, do they have to live in his board? I don't think they have to. It just has to be appointed by the council. Like, I mean, you want to try to to make sure that people in the board have a voice, but ultimately, 
that's the accountability of that elected official to his or her constituents. That's how you started. We have what we have to do that. This is the agenda. I wasn't sure if anybody was asking me. Going forward, what's the, I don't know if we just got anything that it's already set out or whether it's It's nothing in writing that says that, but you all have communicated with each other in the past, and it, it's not been unusual really for someone to. Um, in fact, we have a few currently that have been serving and a council member who wants to appoint that person has communication with the council member whose board they live in. It hasn't been an issue that has happened. Ms. Washington. I was going to recommend a mayor for them but since we do have, um, it's almost on the agenda, I think that's on the agenda, but we still have small, I mean, committee appointments to make and back to our session today and so I would just recommend that this discussion that we continue to look when we do get to these uh, appointments and just hope we can do it really soon get it on the next agenda if possible. So what are you suggesting that if we do that we might be able to fill that HBC? Well with that the full, and make a decision full. about those the, the size of whether we the size oh, of oh, when, oh, when we consider as we, it. Yeah, yeah, as we consider okay. the WB, you have any thoughts? So the last recommendation on the table was let's, I, 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 the, I get the sense that people would like to keep it at nine. And so when we, and based on what Lois just said, uh, when we get to that particular commission, We'll, we'll, we'll finalize our thinking on that item. Is it ready? Is that? It just seems like it would be to our advantage and to the appointees advantage if they are in the room rather than one being two miles this way from, from here on a cold way. November evening, so to see, they're not going to show up at the 67 years of the So if we can have the appointment, the appointment would be, be from, from the board, I think, overall would be better. I, I think if you look at it, and again, I'm just going to use this for example, you got John Bevan, who's been very active, and you've got Sam Johnson, who's been very active. They both live in the same ward, so if one of them would have to come off. Yeah. So, if you've got people that are very active, and they're, yeah. then, but, but that's up to the council. We're the nine member board, so yeah. they don't, I mean, if they both can stay, if we're doing it by ward appointment, then one can come to ex officio, yes. which has the right to vote. According to document that I read, so I don't think that would, that would be the case. Uh, yeah. Seven plus two is nine. Yeah, seven uh, from each ward plus two. It is it is it nine plus two ex officio? It's nine plus unlimited. Unlimited. Or is it two? Those rules. I mean, to keep them. It just says it, it says they may appoint ex officio members. I think it's unlimited, but they don't have a vote. Okay. Oh, so. Okay. So the sentiment I feel I'm sensing here again is we will leave it at nine, but we'll we'll focus on it more specifically when we on staffing up. When we staff when we look mm -hmm. at staffing up. Without any other objection. We'll end this discussion and move to the next item. Thank you, sir. Next, well, we'll, I guess you will need to stay up and walk into the next two agenda items, um, those being weeds, and then we'll move into public nuisances. All right, so again, um, this is an amendment to Chapter 10, Article 3, Division 2, weeds. 
currently have that 18 inch standard and we want to just knock that down to 12 at least uh, for the time being compared to those other jurisdictions we looked at was 18 we were we were uh, leading in the wrong way I guess so we want to try and get back to something more reasonable knock down to 12 and uh, there's also a, a standard in there about how um, to maintain 150 feet of the property on either side of the structured property line. I want to reduce that to the uh, 75 or one parcel width because uh, a lot of times there's one out to a residential structure and there may be some, some very narrow lots and there we're requiring those owners to maintain 150 feet on either side and uh, if you're if you're going to be at the 12 inch if we if we get that approved you're, you're going to get a notice of violation if you're at 12 or more. You have to cut it anyway. So I was trying to add a little bit of clarification and then also reduce that overall height. Based on what we've seen from other municipalities in the state of North Carolina. I believe this should be on your agenda tonight. It is. <laughs> Here. Any questions or any different thinking about the recommendation? Support it. You guys want one more? One more. Okay. Uh, proposed amendment to Chapter 10, Article 3, Division 3, Public Nuisances. Because we passed the non-residential maintenance code, I want to make an update in there to remove the, uh, the, the wording in there, the stipulation intended to be occupied for a human habitation, so that now, since we've got that passed, the uh, Community Code Division can start uh, issuing legal notices for non-residential properties that are open to the public and need to be boarded. And uh, this will be consistent with what will be in our public nuisance uh, letters that will go out so they're aware of the standard and they will not be able to uh, just place uh, regular just blank plywood. They're going to have to paint it, make it a neutral color, make it more as aesthetic as possible when you have a, an opening. So. This just gets us consistent with what we've got that we've just recently adopted within the last month. Found this little section in the code under public nuisances and we'll make that consistent for when we send those letters out. Any questions, thoughts? Well, I will ask this. I know I've seen this at meetings I've been to and I know the rest of us have too where some cities, and probably they do it more particularly in certain areas like a downtown, mm -hmm. uh, when a building is boarded, uh, not only do they paint the plywood a certain a neutral color, mm -hmm. but they might partner with um, local art groups or something and paint, have paintings done on that. It may look like a window, you know, like yes. a uh, store window yes. front. Any consideration or thinking about implementing something like that. We, we do have, um, if, if you get around a little bit, around the uh, Atlantic Arlington Corridor, some other properties, they have painted some to make it look, we'll put like a little uh, black trim in the middle, make it look like there's a window. But we've also done some polycarbonate with some extra funding that we have. So it looks like glass, so it doesn't look like a vacant property. Yeah. So it, it says funding allows for those. Uh, some people go above and beyond. But we do offer um, polycarbonate on some areas, as funding allows, mainly on the main thoroughfares and, and others. So it doesn't look like we're just boarding up the entire city. But we, it's, it's a better visual representation, and we'd like to sort of enhance that a little bit more as we move forward. Thank you. Any other, any other questions or comments? Thank you. Next is um, boards and commissions. Mr. Recognize it. To the clerk. And I've given you a handout. And as you plan, I don't know if you want to talk about this today. I will tell you that I have three new interest forms, and they are right on top. The rest of, uh, and you can see on the very front which vacancies remain. Some of those vacancies also include people who are currently serving who wish to be reappointed. But all of it is there for your consideration. And you will see in yellow as you look through the package. 
which ones are currently serving who want to be reappointed and which ones are vacancies. So I don't know if you want to actually talk about that today or if you just, you know, you could always make those appointments at the next meeting as well. I will say that. Thank you. Those are new personal history forms. You, you can, yes. Consider what we have on the agenda. Can we do this at our next meeting? You can, you can do whatever you want to. Okay. I mean, you can look at them and then do it at your next meeting. Yeah. Maybe. So if you just I, I see a lot of hands shaking up and down. Yeah. There's a couple of them that you uh, One is for the human relations, and one's for the two of the human relations, and there's three vacancies. I didn't know whether we want to go ahead and approve those today. Those are new ones that you've not seen before. So the three up front are for different boards and commissions, but they are three personal history forms you have not seen before. Now with the Workforce Housing Advisory Commission, isn't that board specific? It, it is. Plus categories. Set, right, categories. Oh, oh plus categories, that's right, plus yeah. categories. Right. I think the categories are at the bottom of the carpet So, so all of the wards has an appointment at Central Ward Seven for this particular commission. Okay. Um, but there are a number of vacancies for category. We would like to approve these to this afternoon, or we want to wait to the next. Well, if we are looking at. Um, can't speak for human relations. That's a ward four opening. The mayor has an opening in ward seven. Um, the workforce housing advisory commission. If Miss Dickens is applying to fill the housing developer category, I would recommend her appointment. Unless anyone has any questions. Without objection, it should be appointed. Any others we want to act on? I have a ward for appointee for the human relations. Um, I, I do not have this personal history form. He commits to come in this week plan and get him to complete it. So, it's Lorenzo uh, Ellis. I'd like to nominate him to fill that ward for position. Any, any questions about it? I'd like to do human relations. I'd like to appoint a common steel. Okay. Well, these are my point, but I've got one of them. Mm -hmm. These appointments will be made without objection, subject to getting a personal history form for your appointment. Okay. Any others? Ma'am, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, yes, I would uh, like to request a closed session for attorney client privilege. Okay, so everyone but staff and uh, council, uh, we'll see you when we're out of closed session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Too early, but we're going to go ahead and start uh, our meeting now. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. We do begin our meetings with a prayer. This time I'd ask uh, Council Member Tom Rogers to lead us in prayer. If you're able, please stand. Dear God, we pause to give thanks for this beautiful day and to remember the abundance of our many blessings. We also give thanks for those who sacrifice themselves each day for us to enhance our quality of life and provide protection and safety to us. <coughs> Dear God, we know that you guide and govern everything with order and your love. And we pray that you would be with us in this meeting and fill us with the spirit of wisdom. And may we always act with courage, strength, and understanding so that our decisions 
to advance the peace and well-being in our city. This is my prayer. Here. 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 The City Council, which was held on uh, September the 23rd, 2019, are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? If not, they'll stand as submitted to you. Um, at this time, I'd like to call on our City uh, Manager for a community update. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of Council, as well as the public. This is a rather uh, bittersweet moment um, for me personally as city manager. Uh, I've had the distinct pleasure and honor of working with um, someone who I think has done a tremendous job for the city of Rocky Mountain. I'm speaking of our chief communications um, and marketing officer, Mrs. Tamika Keenan Norman. Tamika Keenan Norman started with the city April of 2012. Since that time, the communications and marketing officer, office, which started with a staff of two, including herself, has now grown to a staff of four. The office has garnered many, many achievements, including but not limited to starting the My Rocky Mount magazine, an annual publication sent to all public utilities customers, initiating a quarter, quarterly publication that goes out to all city employees entitled Talk of the Town, completing a brand branding style guide, and along with that, this new brand and jingles and branding videos which aired on WRAL and WNCR. What I'm talking about is the Rocky Mount, the center of it all. Regional marketing <clears throat> initiatives such as Google Display Ads, advertising at the Mudcat Stadium in the Raleigh News and Observer, and on radio stations in the Raleigh and Greenville markets. She has continued programming on CITY TV 19. Completion of the and premiere of the Sanitation Workers Strike <coughs> documentary. This office has obtained 16 awards from the North Carolina City and County Community Communications Association since 2012. Um, Mr. Mayor and members of council as well as the community, oftentimes in a profession's life, professional person's <coughs> life, especially when they're a spouse, sometimes that spouse moves on and there's a trailing spouse. And for four months now, Tamika has been um, a trailing spouse. And so she will be joining her husband in Salisbury, Maryland. Uh, she will serve as a chief communications uh, and marketing director for an agency there. So regrettably, I must um, inform you all that Tamika will be leaving us, but um, we certainly will miss her many, many contributions. Her last day of employment is this Friday, Thursday, next, next Wednesday. Good. <laughs> I've been trying to keep her <laughs> at least for the four months that I have been aware of um, this transition. But she has done so very much for our communications here in the city. And um, I'm certainly going to miss her in many different ways. But um, I think we're going to have a little celebration for you this Thursday. Got that date right. And I hope that the um, community will come down and um, say uh, farewell and, and good luck to uh, one of our most valued members of the executive leadership team of the city of Rockingham.
thank you to um, all of our citizens, the Rocky Mountain City Council, of course, for your support. A lot of times people don't understand the value of communications, but the council has and has been supportive since day one. Also, our city manager, Rochelle Small Tony, thank you, thank you. I will forever be indebted to you all. Rocky Mountain is is now home to me, so thank you. The only reason I'm leaving is because of my husband. But I love it here, and I thank you so much. I can't say that enough. Mm. I often try to get her another husband. Appreciate you tonight. We're gonna miss you. This time uh, we have a couple of presentations and recognitions on item number six. Uh, the first one is a presentation and proclamation proclaiming the month of October 2019 as Disability Awareness uh, Employment Month to the Human Relations Director, Archie Jones, and members of the Mayor's Commission on Persons with Disabilities and Human Relations staff. So at this time I'd like to ask Archie and any members of the Mayor's Commission to come up and receive this at this time. This is a great group of people, and a lot of them have been um, on this uh, commission for some time. Uh, they do a great job in our city, particularly related to people with different disabilities, and so. Um, I want to thank them personally because they have certainly done a great job and certainly Archie uh, as the head of that department we thank you for the work that you do. So y'all need to come down here and get a picture. Come on down. Let's give them a round of applause. Mount. 
I will read this. It says, whereas first responders include professional and volunteer fire, police, emergency medical technicians, and paramedics, workers in the United States, whereas according to a 2017 compilation of data on the emergency services sector in the United States by the Department of Homeland Security, the first responder community comprises an estimated 4.6 million career and volunteer professionals within five primary disciplines, law enforcement, fire and rescue services, emergency medical services, emergency management, and public works. Whereas the first responders deserve to be recognized for their commitment to safety, defense, and honor. And whereas the mayor and city council of the city of Rocky Mount recognize the dedication of the city's first responders and the excellent service they provide daily and wish to publicly recognize and thank them for their service. Now therefore I, David W. Combs, Mayor of the City of Rocky Mount, do hereby proclaim October 28, 2019 as honoring the nation's first responders day. This time I'd like to all stand and thank them for the job they did. Thank all of our first responders, the ones that are here today, and those that uh, help keep us safe each and every day of the year, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Uh, this time we're going to move on to item number six. This is, uh, or seven, excuse me, petitions to be received from the public. I'm going to read this statement, and again, some of you may or may not have been to our meetings in the past. Uh, it is a petition from uh, the public portion of our meeting. It is an opportunity to address the council. Uh, we do value all citizen input. Um, if you didn't sign up, somebody will bring you a form. Uh, any comments should be directed to the council as a whole and not to individual council members or city staff. It is your opportunity to raise a question or present a request to the council. However, in many cases, council members will not respond to public comments but may refer the matter to the city manager or staff. We ask that you come to the podium, speak in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner. Any personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated. We will monitor the time and give everyone an opportunity to speak. You have three minutes and we'll give you a heads up in about two and a half minutes. Uh, at this time, uh, oh, my first one I'd like to call is Chris Larson. If you'll come on up, Chris. Thank you. My name is Chris Larson and I'm the Vice Chairman of the Edgecombe County Veterans Museum in downtown Tarboro. As some of you saw in today's telegram, we are bringing the Traveling Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall to Edgecombe County, uh, close to our museum. There are over 30 names on that wall from Nash County who didn't make it home from, uh, from Vietnam. And I hope you all will come. This, we're open uh, this Thursday at 9 o'clock. Uh, we have a flyover, we have a ceremony at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We have a flyover of jets from the Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. We have a Navy band from Norfolk. We have uh, honor guard from ROTC units. And our speaker is Walter Marm, who won the Medal of Honor in Vietnam. I hope you come see us. Uh, we, have, we are open 24 hours a day, so if you want to come at 3 o'clock in the morning, we have armed security. All, uh, all hours, and I hope you will take advantage of this. Uh, the wall is 375 feet long. It's, it's longer than a football field. So thank you for your time, and I hope to see you. 
Thank you, Chris. And again, uh, I've got a brochure up here. It's going to be uh, October the 17th through the 20th, and it starts at 9 in the morning right. and goes 24 hours a day through the 20th. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Um, Samuel Battle, 216 Oak Street. And after Samuel would be uh, David Ferris. Again, I, I congratulate, you, congratulate you too for winning another term. I congratulate you when I saw you the night of the election. I mean, of the election. I was very surely in my congratulation from understanding you said a victory party, I mean, a victory party, that a man, Samuel Ballard, that had been fighting against us for two years congratulated me. And you also said that God said he wouldn't make your enemy, your footstool. First of all, I'm not your enemy, and, I, and I'm surely not under your foot. I am, I am a long ways from being under anybody's feet. I was the bigger person to go to you because at the end of the, end of the day, no matter who wins or loses, I certainly have been and will remain very, very, the very best for this community, realizing I promoted unity and harmony in this community. Start with me. But we we all have a part to play. It's different to work and promote unity when it's one side. I have a right, just like the people that vote for you to support any candidate that I want to. So if you feel that I'm under your feet, rest assured that it's not the case. Again, Chris, I'm gonna congratulate you. Um this is breast cancer week right here. Come on, I mean. <coughs> this is breast cancer month right here. And um Excuse me, let me Miss Wackett. Um, did you have Mr. a Mayor, did you didn't you say in your opening comments about public <coughs> comments not to address a Again, Mr. Bounty, every time you come up, you, you kind of just push the, push the limit. So, he did. Um, he didn't lay me the name. Yeah. 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 I just want to know why people in Rocky Mountain is dying of breast cancer. And we got a mammogram machine. It's not hooked up at the um, event center. <coughs> what is the problem? I just want to know. You ain't got to call names though. know who you're talking about. Well, they said it still is in the creek. I just want to know. You talking about. Can you give me an answer? Yeah, I sure can. I'm happy to give you an answer. Okay. Because mm -hmm. every time you come down with the allegations, <coughs> you want to stand and hear, hear what I got to say? I'm, I'm listening now. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Number one, anybody who deals with nuclear radiation knows that the individual who's doing it is at the mercy of the state of North Carolina. Second of all, OIC is collaborating with Nash UNC Hospital and Nash Radiology to go through the process. You don't just buy a machine, hook it up, and start using it. We're going through the process. We have documented five parties involved, and when it's ready to be open, it will be open, sir. And if you are blaming <coughs> breast cancer rates on a mammogram not being hooked up, <coughs> you need to go do your homework, sir. Go do your homework <coughs> on what causes breast cancer, where the root causes are, who's treating it, who's getting it, and who's living with it, and who's dying with it. That's all I'm saying. How long is it going to take? When we finish. How long is it going to take? That's how long it would take when it's finished. All right, Ms. Battle, that's enough. Uh, Mr. Ferris? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, city staff, Fellow citizens, my name is David Ferris. I'm the president and CEO of the Rocky Mountain Area Chamber of Commerce. 
I want to take just a moment or two and talk about something most of us in this room tonight can agree on, and that's barbecue. I hope so anyway. There's not some wrong with it. Anyway, this past weekend, uh, Rocky Mountain hosted the 12th annual uh, Down East Barbecue Throwdown. And again, it was a success. The weather, you know, uh, Councilman Rogers, you were commenting in your prayer tonight on the weather. The weather could not, I don't think it's been any better than that. We've had storms, <laughs> we've had hurricanes blow through here. This was perfect. And for those of you who enjoyed it, um, I think you would have to agree it was as good as it gets. Food was great, the entertainment was great. But I had a visitor today come to my office. He was a participant. He was a vendor. And if I wouldn't sold on Rocky Mountain, sold on that event, he would have sold Al Carter, who has a restaurant in Raleigh called Big Al's, and he was a participant here. And he echoed what I heard, yes, Thursday night, with four or five vendors I always has a habit to go down and visit them. They go back Friday during the day. They go back Friday night and Saturday. I have a good time doing this. And Al came back from Raleigh today just to tell me what a great job the city always does. He said, I was here for the first several, and there were a few years I wasn't. I was back this year. He was complimentary on the city services, on setting it up to the cleanliness, continuous cleanliness of it. He said people were picking up trash all the time. It was immaculate. Um, the uh, police department, chief, he could not have been any more complimentary of the Rocky Mountain City Police Department as if he worked there or his own child worked there. How secure it was, how well the, the, the citizens seemed to act, the food, the lighting, the water, Everything was perfect. Then he went on and talked about. He said, "I've never been to the. I've never been to the uh, athletic complex. I talked to people in Raleigh who have kids going here, and they echo the same sentiment. In closing, thank you. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
thank this council and mayor for quickly funding the runoff election. Uh, one of the uniters in this city certainly is our right and privilege to vote. As a city, we must continue to stay the course in developing a vibrant downtown, safer communities, a flowing and growing local economy. Rocky Mount is really the center of it all. I ask this mayor and council to speak truth to power when it comes to misinformation that sometimes flows like water through this city. When we tell our own story, it negates any manufactured stories. I commend this mayor and council that in spite of the negative things thrown at or about this governing body and this city, you stay focused in improving the lives and making our city attractive to new business and industry. I often wonder what more could be done if all the residents work together rather than work against growth. It is imperative that our mayor's office be a leading voice in creating an equitable Rocky Mount. Rocky Mount can move from better to excellence when we all work together. Thank you. Tamika Keenan Norman, the best. She was a class act, and you will, the city's loss is Salisbury's gain. Uh, I asked this council to do its due diligence in building up Ward 3. Many of the issues raised before the election took place, I fear, may be forgotten now that the election is over. Build it up to include a focus on reducing crime including hiring more officers and consideration of police substation in the high crime areas, removing the abandoned, boarded up houses or remodeling them and assisting neighborhood residents with home ownership or rental. I ask that you give as much attention to the impoverished areas of our city that you are giving to the building and renovating of downtown. <coughs> you think people will come to downtown once it is built up, but the truth is, if we were ever to have a reputable performer come to the event center, most of those in Ward 3 would not be able to afford to attend the event, let alone eat at the steakhouse afterwards. Prepare our residents to qualify for the jobs that are coming by emphasizing and assisting workforce readiness. Instill pride and commitment in the residents of our communities by setting examples for them to follow, not by saying words or doing deeds that are intentionally meant to tear us apart. On another note, on a recent visit to the South Rocky Mount Community Center, I was very dismayed to see that the roof had less and hear that employees had to sit buckets on the floor to catch the water when it rained. Further, some of the ceiling tile had turned brown, presumably from the rain coming in, and I worry about the presence of mold and mildew, which could present a health risk. Although the, the community center may be in Ward 4, it serves as a majority of our youth in Ward 3 also. Seems like only yesterday I was at the ribbon cutting, and this is why it is so hard to believe that the roof is leaking so soon. Either it was not replaced during the remodeling, or the quality of the work that was done is questionable. If this council has not already put a plan in place to fix this problem, I respectfully ask that you do so. Lastly, we do not need to be taught how to be sharecroppers again. We learn to eat right and about the different food groups in school, and most of us have seen our grandparents plow in the field. I know I have. But why not encourage people to pursue degrees so they can one day own an agribusiness rather than plowing the field? So they can buy the whole farm rather than toil the land. Empower people to do for themselves. This is how we make it as a successful community. This is how we become, again, a city on the rise. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. City manager, mayor, and to each and every one of our council members and everyone here. Um, Elaine B. Williams, 801 Hammond Street. First of all, I would like to congratulate our comments. Um, Mr. Knight, Ward 1, Councilman um, Joyner, Ward 3 in his absence. To our newly elected, um, Mr. Walker for Ward 4, and Mr. Daughtry for Ward 5. So congratulations to all. 
I stand to this evening to ask this council to please um, consider an advisory committee. Um, for the past 36 years, there have been an African American female on this council. Now that board will be missing. So please consider coming up with an advisory board uh, committee that will help bridge that voice to the council for the needs of the African American female. Um, that's my plea for you tonight. <coughs> it would be greatly appreciated if you all would consider that. Um, like I say, for 36 years, it's been in place. Now that the voice is missing, or will be missing. Council Lois Walker, we're gonna miss you. I'm sure Mr. Walker gonna do a fine job, and I really appreciate the youth coming up to the board. Um, but we're gonna definitely miss you, Mr. Rico. Congratulations. We're gonna definitely miss you too. But thank you all very much. I thank y'all for your hard work, your consistency. Um, I really appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget it, buddy. Uh, today I was gifted a Love Rocky Mount T-shirt. I got it with a boat. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, but but you know it, it shows me um, that there are other people that love Rocky Mount like I do. I'm a I'm a uh, a native of Rocky Mount. I was born and raised here. Uh, I'm a proud graduate of Rocky Mount Senior High uh, from the largest class ever graduated from there, the best class, 1988. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate this. And it, it, it shows me that all over the country, people are finally learning uh, to live together and uh, more importantly, to coexist. Uh, December 1st, 1955, uh, Rosa Parks, the mother of the modern civil rights movement, refused to give up her seat on the segregated bus. 64 years later and 200 years into the city's history, uh, the citizens elected their first African-American mayor. I hope that we mirror that here in Rocky Mountain. But more importantly, um, the move towards unity in our city is happening. Uh, I don't know if I would have received this or if I would have taken it a few months ago, but I, I took it because I I met uh, these people at the, uh, we were at the meal, and we were talking, we were all enjoying Rocky Mountain. We were just in, you know, but I saw that somebody else enjoyed Rocky Mountain like I did. Um, it, it, it's going to take time, it's going to take a good faith effort from all parties. Uh, it will take prayer, understanding of different perspectives, and most importantly, the capacity to love. But I think if we do those things that we will uh, be able to come together and solve some of our issues. Now, there was something that was said a few minutes ago. Uh, I didn't grow up on the farm. My grandmother and grandfather had a farm. I used to have to work it every summer in Wallace, North Carolina, down in Duplin County, where Mr. McDonald was from. Uh, I used to have to, have to go down there and work. And uh, I, I've done it all from feed chickens to, to do everything. I remember mean, even frying a, a pump to get water. Uh, but the thing that it did teach me, and I went to college, I'm a college graduate, but the thing that it did teach me is a work ethic. Those people, I don't discount anything they ever did because they worked so that we could have better lives. All right, but man. they also showed us what a work ethic is. So hmm. farming is one thing, yes. And if we have community gardens, I think it's great. And it's going to help us to teach these young kids a work ethic, something that they don't have. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening, your honorable mayor and our city manager and our esteemed city council. My name is Nathalie O'Ree and I am the third vice president of the Rocky Mount branch of the NAACP. Now, the NAACP was founded in 1909, and the mission of the NAACP is for the advancement of colored people to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of all persons, and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. And I stand before you 
because the eyes of America have been looking upon Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And I believe that with the leadership that we have and the oncoming leadership, that you have, dis have demonstrated a high level of respect for one another and for the people that you serve. And I am a resident of Rocky Mountain. I am very proud of you, and I'm so proud of where we have come from. And I have, can see a great vision of where we shall go in a continued environment of respect. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Benjies, and then um, I'm going to let you take the mic. I think it's to Mr. Jordan. Senior High, uh, mm. Phil Ford era, mm. well, that tells you how old I am. Mm. Um, is there, I'm just really upset about our Nash Rocky Mountain City schools in the tanker. D and F grading, what the heck is that? How did it get that bad? I know a lot of teachers and they are excellent teachers. So what's going on? Does anybody in the city council, do y'all have a, an advocate or a member or a whatever you want to call it that sits on the school board or they just get our tax? So we just give them tax and let them do what they want to do? They have a board. It's a I know they have a board, but let me tell you, they must be asleep. But anyhow, that's what I really wanted to know. Oh, and also, the whole thing, a couple of years ago I attended for a very good reason. And the tickets were like $36.50. Now they're $50 a piece. I was hoping that my seventh ward representative would be here so I could ask her, but um, why did it go up so much? I mean, if, if my husband and I go, that's 100 bucks. Is it really going to be worth it? I don't know. Anyhow, thank you. Um, Please don't let her. Mm. And I'm so glad that on the barbecue thing, everybody kept saying in the paper how clean everything was. Mm. Mm. They obviously did no, not go down 301 in front of my shop because I didn't get out there and clean it up. But please, everybody, try not to. Mm. 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 She needs some help. She needs some help.
been mayor almost 12 years, and he's probably been to more city council members than anybody out here. Yes, sir. Didn't have to be here. So uh, thank you, Mr. Turner. Um, our last uh, one is T.J. Walker Jr. to come forward. <laughs> say thank you uh, first of all for um, all of your tenures uh, on the council thank you for your hard work thank you for being able to uh, do what you do to serve our city and I thank you for um, all of your uh, guidance assistance and prayers uh, in this election process I look forward to serving Ward 4 and the citizens of Rocky Mountain North Carolina I look forward to us working together uh, so we can unify and be able to progress the city and move forward make Rocky Mountain the city um, that, it, that it can be and that it will be if we all continue to work hard. So thank you all for your work and I uh, pray that all of you will continue to do great things even beyond your tenure and I pray that you all will be able to have a great night's nice rest. Thank you. Thank you. That's the end of our uh, petitions we received from the public. We're going to move on now to the rest of our agenda items. Item number eight. This is a consideration of a ratification of a letter to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. It's an environmental review for activity and projects uh, categorically excluded subject to Section 58.5. Uh, this has to do with CDBG Housing Repair and Home Investment Partnership Programs. The recommended actions to ratify the execution of the mayor of the letter and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Environmental Review for each activity and project. Right. This time we consider a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilmember Blackwell, second by Councilmember Watkins. Right. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Item 8 is approved. Item 9 is a consideration of project ordinance appropriating funds in the Public Safety Grants Fund. This is for receipt of assistance to firefighters. The grant's $154,000. Uh, the FEMA is 138 and some change. And uh, our matching fund is $15,000. Recommended actions to adopt the ordinance? So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Knight, second by Council Member Rogers. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Item 9 is approved. Item 10 is a consideration of one approval of a receipt of a 2019 um, Edwin Byrne Memorial Justice or JAG uh, Award and two, a project ordinance appropriating funds in the Public Safety Fund. Recommended actions to approve the receipt of the grant funds, including authorizing the city manager to execute the grant award in special conditions, and two, adopt the ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Rogers, second by Council Member Watkins. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Item 10 is approved. Item 11 is a consideration of preliminary assessment role. This is prepared to recover the cost incurred by the city in connection with the housing code enforcement on the following properties, and there are three properties there. Uh, recommended action is to adopt a resolution of determination of cost of repair or demolition of substandard housing and structures, to adopt the resolution of preliminary assessment role, and three, schedule a public hearing for November the 11th, 2019. Second. Motion by Council Member Knight, second by Council Member Blackwell. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Item 11 is approved. Item 12 is consideration of fiscal year 2020-5303 Metropolitan Planning Program Grant. This is from the NCDOT. Um, it is a city designated Federal Transit Administration receipt for the City of Rocky Mount Urban Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. And this is for various planning activities for the Transit Department. Uh, recommended action is to approve the grant agreement. Unauthorize the mayor and city clerk to execute required documentations and certifications. So moved. Motion by Council Member Rogers, second by Council Member Bullock. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Item 11 is approved. Or item 12, excuse me. 
Item 13 is a consideration of request for water services outside the city limits. This is due to the proximity of the city limits and feasibility of providing additional city services. Properties are not good candidates for annexation at this time. Uh, the three properties there, and the recommendation is one, to approve the request subject to payment of required privilege and connection fees as established in our administrative policy. And two, authorize the city manager to execute annexation and water service agreements on behalf of the city. I hear a motion. Yes. Mr. Bullock? Okay, you have a motion. We have a second? Second. All right. Motion by Council Member Bullock, second by Council Member Rogers. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Item uh, 13 is approved. Item 14 is consideration of an ordinance amending Chapter 12. Um, this is of the city code that reduces the maximum allowable height of weeds or grass to 12 inches. It has been 18, and it reduces the minimum allowable distance of growth from property line of a structure to 75 feet, or one parcel width, whichever is less. The recommended action is to adopt the ordinance. So Second. Motion by Council Member Blackwell, seconded by Council Member Watkins and Knight. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Item 13 is approved. Item 14 is a consideration of an ordinance. Uh, excuse me, that was number 14. Uh, number 15 is consideration of scheduling a special call committee to hold meeting for Wednesday, October the 23rd. 2 p.m. for the purpose of going to a closed session for discussion relative to the personnel matter. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Council Member Rogers, second by Council Member Blackwell. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Uh, we also have one other item added to the agenda. This is to uh, uh, go ahead and announce that we're going to have a, on October the 28th at 2 o'clock, there will be a committee of the whole meeting. And uh, we just need to give that public notice tonight. Is there anything else? Well, yes, Mr. And that's at 2 p.m. on October the 28th. Um, Mr. Mayor, which, um, for, this is questions for the manager. And so, uh, Madam Manager, would you give us an update on uh, the improvements for the roof in South Rocky Mountain? Yes, ma'am. Uh, that, that roof actually is in. Um, reviewed now by our property management um, team. As I understand it, there have been bids put out for the repair of the roof, and at some point very soon we'll be able to make an award for it. Thank you. Anything else to come before the council? If not, thank you all for being here tonight, and we're adjourned.